as a person who professes to have faith and believe that, that we have a purpose of being on this planet and we have a responsibility of not just the ecology that goes on, but a responsibility towards one another and a responsibility to the animals that are under our care, that I just saw this as part of, you know, sort of my thing. You know, where I think I think life is worth being spent on. So I took over this company and then I didn't know much and we kind of put things together and, and we're at a point now where we're just really excited about what's taking place. In so we have, a, we have a goal of our company, the ethical treatment of animals. It's not just a business, but it really is a mission and it guides what we do. Now I think old Gandhi made a great statement. The greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. And if you travel the way we do around the world, especially in developing countries, you have over two million roaming dogs just in Mexico City. Um, and you see the suffering of these animals, and it just correlates to also the suffering of people. I'm sure you're aware that there are several hundred million dogs around the world. Many are without homes, suffer without proper care, and it creates a normal, enormous health problems uh, for people and for obviously the animals. You have the euthanasia issue going on, needless suffering if we had controlled population management, if we had it improve animal health and welfare. All of that is, is known, but how do you get it done when the only means available to us <coughs> is surgery? Some of the situations about castration that because it was the only available means, uh, we often don't give all of the the evidence-based findings, as Dr. Wheaton would point out, of the problems of castration. Between cancer, heart issues, obesity, prostate cancer, urinary tracts, you go right down the line, shortening of life. Uh, I was really surprised. Now, <clears throat> testosterone is important for canine health. Castration virtually eliminates testosterone, which can be detrimental to a wide range of biological systems outside of Reproduction, so, testosterone really is needed when it comes to uh, the health of a male animal. It eliminates the testosterone and here's what can take place. You need testosterone for all of the things mentioned. Skin, skeletal, liver, muscle, hair, kidney, immune, metabolism, red blood cells, bone density. All of, these are the findings. These are what, this is what the experts are saying. But unfortunately, that is not often what's spoken. Does it testosterone impact behavior? The jury's still out. They've yet to find conclusive evidence for any of that. So we are the first, world's first FDA-approved chemical sterilant. Now with a simple injection, you can sterilize male dogs without the complications of surgery. The guy who manages the restaurant who we were here about a year and a half ago at the uh, naval base, because the US Army is using our product now and we used his dog to demonstrate and train the army veterinarians. And we did his dog and they were shocked because the dog was injected, the owner was there petting his dog, the dog was finished, walked away. So here's what we've proven with our product in over 20,000 dogs. It's permanent, it's safe, it's painless, non-invasive, no severe adverse reactions, quick and simple and better maintenance, it better maintains the integrity of the hormonal balance. The highest number you can get with an FDA approved product is 99.6% efficacy. They'll never tell you that a product is 100% because there could always be an animal and any drug, that just can't be done. We have a 99.6% rating with the FDA, so we're pretty proud of that. And we've done our 20,000 dogs in Mexico. We've done dogs all over the world now. And the findings are very good. So these are the organizations that we're working with now. ASPCA, Veterinary Universities, Humane Society, Spay and Neuter Clinics, Africa, Pacific Partnership with the U.S. Army, Veterinarians Without Borders. So you can help animals with a better life. We believe it. We've seen it. Experienced. Yes. Yes. Um, when you're uh, doing this to dogs in Mexico, how do you make a difference to the dogs that you a great question. Now, Dr. Wheaton's here to do... Well, let, let me answer the question while he's switching the presentation. Yeah. The ACCMD is dedicated to the development of 
non-surgical forms of sterilization, one of the things they are looking at is developing international standards to be able to tell how a dog has been chemically sterilized. Some people tattoo the left ear. One, another country might tattoo the right ear. Some tattoo in the groin. Our theory is that by tattooing in the area where a surgical incision would be, you only have to look one place. Females on the abdomen, call them the umbilicus. On the, in the male, uh, cranial to the scrotum. Now, the testicles will still be present, but they will be smaller, more fibrotic, more atrophy. So to the untrained individual, it might be a little bit difficult to tell. So we are advocating developing some form of tattooing for identification. But that's an outstanding question. Yeah, and I'll let Dr. Dr. Whedon take over from here. In our collaboration agreement that we presently have with the Centers for Disease Control, we're working on, because we're wanting to take the rabies um, vaccination and our product, and, and we're actually blending them. But uh, that's part of the issue going around the world when you're talking about multiple millions and millions of animals. And so what, what Bob is saying is, is right. It's, it's not so much you can tag. We're trying to find one, one <coughs> that every standard that everyone will follow. 